What you guys are about to see is a video that I recorded back in early April talking about the value of rookie picks, how they can fluctuate, what effects, what factors play into rookie pick value. This was recorded back in early April as a site exclusive over on Flock Fantasy. So if you guys want access to, you know, bonus content early ahead of time, this was about a month ago that I recorded this video. Definitely check out the site flockfantasy.com using the promo code FSE. You'll get 30% off. But if I say anything in this video that might be outdated, I think I mentioned the fact that there might be five first round quarterbacks. Just disregard that. The principles are more so what we're focused on in these Dynasty 101 videos. So hope you enjoy. Let's get right into it. All right, so quickly, just want to define what rookie picks are to make sure that if there's any new dynasty players watching this, they know exactly what I'm talking about. So rookie picks are your draft capital. So with 2023 rookie drafts fast approaching, your rookie picks are the capital that you have in 2023. So you might have the 108, the 208, the 212, and the 401, for example. That would be your rookie capital in 2023. And then your future rookie picks would be draft picks in subsequent years, in 2024, 2025, 2026. For example, you might have all of your own picks plus an additional 2024 first. The life cycle of rookie picks at the Fantasy Stock Exchange, we often compare rookie picks to the stock market, right? Players, draft classes, rookie picks rise and fall in value over time based on a number of different factors. During rookie hype season, for example, from January to April, which is the season that we're in right now, rookie picks continuously go up in value. They become extremely valuable because people are watching pro days and combines and all that kind of stuff. During the fantasy football season, the rookie picks become less valuable because we're focused on raw production. We're focused on winning championships. So that's kind of the life cycle of rookie picks and the factors that impact rookie value. There's four of them that I'm going to break down in the coming sections here. Number one is hype and rookie hype season basically kind of already alluded to it. If you aren't already on dynasty Twitter, you might not know what I'm talking about, but I suggest if you're a dynasty fantasy football player, you create a Twitter account and follow all of your dynasty creators that you listen to because dynasty hype season is ongoing, but it peaks, especially around this time of year right now in January, we, we first start seeing people start to talk about prospects. People are like, Oh man, Bryce young is going to be a problem in the NFL. This generates conversation and debate, which consequently causes people to be more interested in the upcoming rookie class, even shortly after the season has ended. In February, we see things like the Senior Bowl, the Shrine Game, you know, the Combine start to uh, come into effect, which again causes us to become more interested in these upcoming rookie picks in this upcoming NFL draft and thus increases the value of our rookie picks. In March, Pro Days, Combine results flooding people's timelines nonstop. And it's now month number three of the same prospects being discussed over and over again. And then in April, which is the time that I'm actually recording this, it's smokescreen season, right? We are hearing everything and anything uh, about this NFL draft. And this is when rookie picks, in my opinion, hold the most value, which is like right now in the months of April, as you guys are watching this. Many other dynasty analysts will tell you that the best time to sell rookie picks is during the rookie draft or shortly after the NFL draft. But in my opinion, that advice is only applicable in casual leagues because in casual leagues, most people, once the season is over, forget about fantasy football and maybe come back to fantasy football. Once the NFL draft has happened, they start to do some research at that point, leading to the rookie draft being the actual peak time to sell picks. But in the leagues that I play in, and I'm sure the leagues that most of you guys play in as well, they're sharper players, right? The guys, uh, they follow the dynasty season, the rookie season throughout the process, and they know, generally speaking, who the players are. They're a lot more educated than more casual players, and they're buying picks in hopes that whatever prospects they covet highly, their favorite prospects, land in the ideal landing spot with great draft capital. So for me, the competitive dynasty leagues that I play in, people know that rookie pick hype season after the NFL draft is a spot to sell rookie picks, where for me, the way that I pivot is I sell them now when people are excited about the NFL draft. So hype, I would say, is the biggest factor that drives rookie pick value. It's the thing that fluctuates the value the most out of any of these four factors that I'm going to break down. And another example of rookie hype season in full effect years in advance would be three years ago, right? When we were talking about this 2023 draft class and how valuable it was going to be, we were comparing it to the 2020 class that we just had. That in turn caused people to collect 2023 picks and vice versa, be hesitant to trade away 2023 picks, even in like 2021 and 2022 startups. In the dynasty space, we have this uncanny ability to look at this class or look at a class in general 
with rose colored glasses, right? We see the sophomores and the freshmen producing, and we start to project how good the class might be, just assuming that everybody's going to continue to develop, continue to grow and hit their ceiling. According to Dynasty Twitter, that's what's going to happen with all of the 2024 and 2025 prospects. It's inevitable. They're all going to be elite. It's already happening for 2024 picks as well. We assume right now that it'll be better than 2023, but we really have no idea, right? That might not be the case. We get one more year of data on these players and we realize that player that needed to take a step forward didn't take a step forward. You know, some of these guys get injured once they get under the microscope. We realize, oh, this guy's too small. This guy's not athletic enough, whatever the case is. And that happened this year with pretty much every prospect not named Bijan Robinson. So that's kind of how rookie hype season develops years in advance sometimes or you know, a couple months at a time throughout January, February, March, April, and then May when we usually have our rookie drafts. The second factor that affects rookie pick value is time. And time plays a part, and this could be a whole separate video if I really wanted to, in and of itself, is the time value of money principle that people talk about in investing and, you know, finance translating to fantasy football. So basically how it translates is that picks are less valuable now because they are going to increase in value over time as we get closer to those draft classes. So how long someone has to wait to spend the pick absolutely plays a part in and factors in in the picks value, right? For example, 2023 picks are worth more now than they were in 2020 because now we get to actually spend said 2023 draft picks for no other reason aside from the 2023 class actually being this year and it's materializing and we know the players now instead of three years ago when it was all a big projection. Basically, the same thing can be said for 2025 and 2026 picks right now. They're probably pretty easy for you guys to go out and acquire in trades if you're even allowed to trade for them because someone has to wait a few years to spend them and they might not even understand or know who's in that class. So you can go out and acquire those first round picks easily when maybe two years time from now, we start to learn some of the players. We learn about, you know, Nick Singleton and Quinchon Judkins, Drew Aller and, you know, Arch Manning and some of the guys coming out in 2025 and 2026. Once we start to learn names about a class, that's when people start to really start to value it highly if they're uh, if they're in on that class. And, and we're starting to see some of those guys come to light with 2025. Not really much with 2026 because those are the incoming freshmen. Um, so Arch Manning's pretty much the only name that I know. But, but for the most part, that's basically how time affects rookie picks, right? Three years in advance, a first round pick is not worth that much. A first round pick now for the 2023 class is worth quite a bit because we get to spend those picks this year. So uh, the third factor that impacts how rookie pick value is determined is scoring format. And I think this is a big time impact that can have an effect on your rookie pick value in your league specifically. If you know your league settings and it's often disregarded for a lot of leagues. For example, this year we have potentially five first round quarterbacks four for sure, potentially Hendon Hooker as well. And for myself, I play predominantly in super flex leagues. So that's a big freaking deal as opposed to someone who plays in one quarterback leagues um, where, you know, pick 108 might not be as valuable as it is in a super flex format, because not only are you going to have the chance at potentially Will Levis or Hendon Hooker, two of the bottom quarterbacks, you're also going to see prospects like Jordan Addison, Quinton Johnson, Jameer Gibbs potentially slide down to the 108 versus where they're going to go in a one quarterback draft, 103, 104, 105 type of area. Same goes for other positions as well. If you're in a three wide receiver, three flex full PPR league, then wide receivers hold a lot of value in that type of format. And a 2022 class that we saw last year loaded with wide receiver talent would have been very good for you if you held three first rounders in last year's class, as opposed to what you know we were saying in super flex leagues, which is this is not a very good class. Um, or if you're in a two tight end premium or you have to start two tight ends or whatever the case is, a tight end class as strong as 2023 with Michael Mayer, with Dalton Kincaid, with Darnell Washington, with Luke Musgrave, all these guys that are projected very highly, that increases the value of your first round picks, of your early second round picks because a tight end premium type of format would increase the value of those tight ends. And of course, we have a great tight end class this year. So don't discount scoring format as a totally huge contributor to pick value. 108 for Jamison Williams in a hypothetical trade scenario is a completely different question in a one quarterback, you know, two wide receiver, two running back, no tight end premium type of format. I would definitely take Jamison Williams there, but in a, a super flex, you know, two tight end premium, I might take the, the 108 in that, in that decision, because you might have a chance at Will Levis. You might have a chance at Jordan Addison, whatever the case is. So um, scoring format definitely plays a big factor in rookie pick value. Uh, as well. And then this is the fourth factor, which is basically actual production on the field, which is the real life performances of these players that we're projecting in future draft classes. So it should go without saying, but a perfect example of this is in 2023, the 2023 class, 
Coming into the season, we thought that Kayshawn Boutte and Sean Tucker would be top 10 picks in rookie drafts at this time right now that we're having rookie drafts. But those guys had a down 2022 season and thus devalued the mid to late first area of rookie classes in 2023 because we expected, oh man, if all of these guys go ahead, we're going to get some great prospects at 110. And people were buying late 2023 first as a result of that. But because those guys had a down season, not only did their own value go down, they devalued the class overall because as you know, freshmen and sophomores, we were expecting big time explosions out of them as juniors. And the same is true for if we're you know, mid-September this time next year, and Caleb Williams is having yet another Heisman Trophy winning campaign. Drake May looks like a superstar. Marvin Harrison looks like the best wide receiver in college football. Brock Bowers having an awesome season as well. That on-field production is going to increase the value of 2024 draft capital, which is the fourth factor, like I said. Those were the four factors that impact rookie pick value. But along with these factors, we also need to keep in mind what the core principle of acquiring rookie picks is, which is that they will never ever, ever lose value. Rookie picks do not lose value. That is a stone cold fact. Even if half the draft class gets injured or underperforms, the time value of money principle always stands true. Even if the uh, perception of a class or the hype of the class fluctuates, just like this class has. 2023 was once thought of as an elite class. Now we realize it's, it's a good class, but not a great class. Rookie hype season prevails no matter what, every damn year, no matter how bad or disappointing a class is, it picks up steam as the off season goes along. And the reason is because the market has months to argue about these prospects. We have months to watch them work out of the combine, do pro days, hear more hype about them. And there's nothing else going on in the football calendar. This is the only thing that we can think about and talk about as dynasty degenerates. Like most of you guys watching this are late 2023 first, They look like a letdown, right? We were buying these picks back in 2021, 2022, and we're looking, we're thinking that they might be a letdown given what we were promised, but they're still more valuable this time now than they were this time last year. Even though this time last year, we would have said late 2023 first, that's a highly valuable pick. And now we're like, ah, I might trade my late 2023 first away for a 2024 first or something like that. And the same goes for future picks as well. Early 2024 capital was valued as a top 70 asset, according to Keep Trade Cut. Back in July, it is now valued as a top two round startup pick because people want the chance at Caleb Williams, at Marvin Harrison, all those players. So the point of this video is to understand how rookie picks behave and recognize when is a good time to strike, when to make trades and how to use these factors to your advantage. And I'm going to kind of exemplify that in the next four trades that I go over here, because I'm going to give you an example of how you can use each of the four factors that I talk about to your advantage. So example one, how to use rookie hype to your advantage. You just came in second. This is a hypothetical scenario in your super flex league. And we're in mid April, right? Somebody in your league is enamored with Zay flowers and he wants to offer you Michael Pittman jr. For your one eleven. to me, that's a great trade to make. Cause not only are you a contending team by making that trade, you understood that your trade partner is certain that he's going to get Zay flowers at one eleven, which is by no means a certainty. And you're also getting a discount on a productive young wide receiver like Pittman, who I would value higher than the 111. But the reason you were able to get this trade done is because of rookie hype season. It it increases the value of those picks and allows you to trade for better veterans if you choose to make that decision. You don't know what's going to happen in the rookie draft. That guy might have bought 111 hoping he gets Zay Flowers. But if Zay Flowers goes to a great landing spot, he won't be there at 111 and vice versa. He go to a terrible landing spot, might not be worth the 111 anymore. So um, example number two is using the time factor like I talked about. In this hypothetical scenario, your team just won the championship, right? You won the championship. You need to rebuild because the reason you won the championship is because you have older guys like Derrick Henry, Travis Kelsey, Dalvin Cook, and a bunch of aging vets. That's why you won the championship. So what you do is be proactive. You trade Derrick Henry for a 2025 first. You trade Travis Kelsey for a 2024 first and second. You trade Dalvin Cook for a 2024 second and a young upside piece like Sky Moore. What you've now done is invested in future draft capital, understanding that those picks are going to appreciate in value the closer we get to those draft classes and you're aligning your next winning window after you just won the championship when you tore this down for a rebuild. So that's an example of using time as one of the uh, ways to exploit rookie pick value. Example number three is using scoring format, right? In this scenario, you have a great team for the long term, but your only Travis, your only tight end is Travis Kelsey. So you have Travis Kelsey. You can you can compete again this year. Maybe you just won the championship or finished highly, but your only tight end is Travis Kelsey, and it's a two point per tight end premium league. So you need a backup tight end for the future. And you notice that in your rookie draft, people are letting the tight end slide. You see Michael Mayer is on the board at 203. You strike, you send like your wide receiver seven or eight because your roster is really good. 
in Wandell Robinson, and you go out and you get Michael Mayer and you exploit the fact that your league mates aren't paying close enough attention to what your scoring format is. They let Michael Mayer, Dalton Kincaid, whoever it ends up being at 203, 204, 205, and you make that move. You strike when the iron's hot, taking advantage of understanding your scoring format and inherently understanding the value of rookie picks and how your scoring format can change that. Because in this class in 2023, the scoring format of having a two tight end premium or you have to start two tight ends is going to make this class much better because the tight end class is very good. And in example number four, which is actual college production, I, I kind of already teased this, but you fast forward to mid-September, right? We're into 2023. It's the beginning of the season and you know, you're know you know trying to win the championship or whatever the case is. And Caleb Williams just threw for five touchdowns and 400 yards. And Brock Bowers just went eight for 125 and two touchdowns. Travion Henderson ran for 220 yards and three touchdowns. Everybody's so excited about the 2024 class that somebody in your league offers you Kyler Murray, who hasn't yet played because he's coming off an ACL tear, for your mid-2024 first. Just to have a chance to secure one of these prospects, you take advantage of that on-field performance not being there with Kyler because he's injured, and you see the on-field performance of these college prospects, and you get yourself a top-10 dynasty quarterback for a singular first-round pick in this format. So that's a couple examples of how you can use the value of rookie picks and the factors that change the value of rookie picks to your advantage. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did subscribe. If you are new around here, if you're watching this on the site beforehand, check out all we have to offer over at Flock Fantasy. Check out all the articles uh, from me, Corey Bushland. Check out uh, my co-host Daniel McKinnon's articles as well and go to uh, the rankings tab and check out our rankings as well. And if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, we release this as a pre-release to our Flock Fantasy subscribers and you can become a member over there by going down to the link in the pinned comment or in the description, flockfantasy.com slash FSE. We'll get you 30% off all of our annual packages. You'll get a free two-day free trial to check out all, everything on the site to see all the value before you pay for anything. So definitely check that out if you're interested. Like I said, rankings, bonus content, articles, all that good stuff is available at Flock Fantasy. So make sure you check that out. But with that being said, peace out and we'll talk to you soon.